So I've done my best to be a Linux advocate on this channel, but there are times where Linux just doesn't cut it. There are certain types of software that just don't work on Linux, which is what I run on my main desktop. I was trying to set up WireGuard on my PC the other day, which is totally available on Linux, but for some reason it has this complicated command line process and I couldn't get it to work. Every other platform with WireGuard has a nice GUI, and I just wanted to be able to VPN into a server not in my house, which was being way more complicated than it needed to be. Windows has an easy interface where I could just drop in my configuration file, so I was fortunate to have the setup that I do. In this setup, I have a Linux host, which is a lightweight system for my daily web browsing and my CPU-based tasks, and I just use the built-in graphics in my Ryzen CPU. At my disposal, I have three virtual machines that I use for various stuff, but I get the most use out of this Windows VM here, which is named Win11, even though it is Windows 10. In order to make this whole thing worth it, I've given it an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti, which my virtual machines get access to, which makes them good workstations, since I can give them most of my RAM and CPU, and they get a GPU, so they can edit videos, run big games, run AI, and all that good stuff. There's not a noticeable drop in performance, they don't lag, and they're more reliable, because if the Windows machine, for example, gets an update that breaks it, I can revert to a snapshot of an older version that worked, rather than just being screwed. One thing to note is that only one virtual machine can use the graphics card at a time, so if you do something like this, don't start up more than one VM at once. So everything you could possibly want for this setup can be found on the ArchWiki, which is really nice and probably the best resource a Linux user has at their disposal, if I'm being honest. I'll briefly be going over the steps to get this going and showcasing how I use this. If you're just here to see me make the virtual machines, skip to this timestamp on screen. So the wiki first tells you to enable virtualization in the BIOS of your computer. So to do this, you want to power off your PC, and when you power back on, there should be a quick screen that flashes and will tell you which key brings you to the BIOS. On most computers, this is either a function key like F10 or the delete key. In my case, this is the delete key, so I just mash the delete button until it brings me into the BIOS. Once you're here, you want to find CPU settings and turn on virtualization support. The settings will look different based on your motherboard manufacturer, but it's all roughly the same across the board. Once you've done that, you can boot into your computer and move on to the next step. The next step is to enable IOMMU, which is a grouping mechanism for all the devices connected to your PC. I'm using Grub as my bootloader, so that's what I need to edit. In this line here, go ahead and add either AMD underscore IOMMU equals on, or Intel underscore IOMMU equals on, depending on which processor you have. Save this file and exit. Back onto the Arch Wiki, we can use this little command here to see that it worked. Notice that there is a um, hashtag here. So you do need to be a super user. I'm just going to go ahead and add sudo before this. There we go. You can see that it worked. And using this nice little script right here, you can actually get a layout of all your IOMMU devices. Now it's a little hard to see, so I'm going to adjust this. We can find the device we want to pass through. For me, it's this NVIDIA graphics card. Notice there's both a video and audio, and the card has its own IOMMU group, which is what we want. If it's sharing a group with other devices that you won't be giving to your virtual machine, you may want to try plugging your GPU into a different PCI slot, or using the ACS override to further break up the groups. I've had to do this with my Proxmox for my hard drives, which connect to a PCI card, so this is what my config looks like on Proxmox as an example. Go ahead and copy the IDs of the device, and let's put them into our bootloader configuration file. Notice I've put vfio-pci.ids equals, and then copy-pasted the two IDs I wanted to pass through. Save the file, exit. We will regenerate the grub.cfg file in order to solidify these changes. Go ahead and type grub dash make config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg we are getting a message saying we need to run this as root so i'm going to go ahead and run this as root since we just typed this in we can do this by typing sudo and two exclamation points um, that's a nice little trick if you typed a command that you need to run as root uh, you don't have to type out the whole thing again 
The point of this is that we're trying to stop the host system from seeing the graphics card so that it's available for our virtual machines. Typically, one of the first things that will happen when the computer starts up is the graphics drivers will load and the host will start to work with the card. So we're trying to catch the computer before it has a chance to do anything with this card. So we need to load a few processes early in order to ensure that the drivers don't bind to the card. So we are adding these things to the configuration file located in etsy slash makeinitcpio.com. It's also good to check hooks down here and make sure modconf is in here. If it's not, just go ahead and add it right here. Once that's all good, save and exit, and run sudo make init cpio dash capital P. Normally, when a kernel is upgraded or installed, Arch has a Pac-Man hook to take care of this, but we just need to regenerate the init ramfs ourselves this time around. To let these changes actually take effect, we need to reboot. Now that that's all set up for Linux stuff, now we just need to set up the virtual machines. I use Vert Manager as my interface. It's not as nice and polished as something like VirtualBox, but I think you'll find it to be much more useful than VirtualBox. All the dependencies required to make this work can be downloaded at once. Since I'm on Arch, I'm going to go ahead and sudo pacman, and I'm going to download a few things here. I'm going to be downloading Vert Manager, QEMU, LibVirt, EDK2-OVMF, DNS Mask, and IPTables-NFT. If you want to make a Windows 11 virtual machine, you can also download SWTPM, since a TPM module is required for Windows 11. Let's go ahead and enable a few things now that we have them here. sudo systemctl enable libvertd.service dash dash now, because we want this to happen right now. sudo systemctl enable vert log d dot socket dash dash now because we want this to happen right now now i got an error on this one since my network is already active because uh, I've done this before, but you won't have this issue. Now we're all good to start Vert Manager and make our virtual machines. If you want to make a Windows virtual machine, just go to their website and download the ISO. It's a big boy, it's like 5 gigs or something like that. Let's create a new virtual machine, find our Windows ISO and give it the resources we want to give. Once we've done that, I'm going to check this box and make some changes before startup. First thing I'm going to do is change this firmware to ovmf underscore code dot secboot dot fd. Apply the changes, go down to CPU, Check the box that says manually set CPU topology. We only have one socket, but we do want to give it four cores, and each core has two threads. So we're giving it half of the CPU. Memory's all good. Everything else should be all good. So we can go ahead and begin the installation. At this point now, you're just installing Windows. Um, I'm sure you've probably installed Windows on a computer before. This isn't a very exciting process. You just, you know, if you have a key, you enter it. If you don't, you just say you don't have a key. Choose Windows 10 Home. You accept the terms. You do a custom install because we're just doing Windows only. We have this drive of virtual space we've given it. And it does its thing. So a quick little trick 
um, when you're setting up a Windows virtual machine, you are going to be forced to make an account unless you do something a little special. So Windows is obviously not going to prevent you from making a Windows installation if you don't have internet. So what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and go to the edit connection details, go to virtual networks, and you can actually just press this X to stop the network. What this will do is cut off your virtual machine from the internet. And all you have to do is hit this back arrow right here. It'll refresh itself. And once it realizes that you're no longer connected to the internet, it'll just let you continue with your sign on. Virtual machine has finished installing. We're just going to go ahead and shut this down. Now in the virtual machine manager, we're going to open this window, go to the light bulb icon here, and delete a few things. So we're going to go to the video module and click none. Oh yes, we do need to apply those changes, my bad. You can try to remove certain things like display spice, but sometimes it just won't let you, so that's fine. Go ahead and click add hardware, go to PCI host. And this is where we're going to find our GPU. So we need to add both. So here's the video. Click add hardware again. And this time we'll add the audio. Now all we got to do is power on the machine and it should actually power with the GPU instead. Do keep in mind that your graphics card does need to be plugged into a monitor, otherwise this won't work. So if you have multiple ports on your monitor, you can just toggle. Even though you can make virtual disks to store your virtual machines, I actually have a Windows installation on an SSD, which I can boot as a VM or bare metal based on my needs. It's nice to have the option. In order to do this, I installed Windows on the SSD, I clicked Add Hardware, and I added the NVMe that it was stored on. Lastly, I have a few quality of life touches, which allows me to use my same keyboard and mouse for both the host and the virtual machine, so I can switch back and forth as I need them. By using FDEV, I'm able to hit the control buttons on my keyboard to switch back and forth between the host and the virtual machine. There's this awesome article from the pass through post that shows you how to get FDEV set up if you don't know which devices to pass through. So what you can do is you can use this command ls slash dev input by ID, and it'll give you a list of your input devices. If you don't know which one it is, since there's multiple, the article tells you exactly how you can find which one to pass through. It's a very specific one, but you can find it using the command and the naming scheme should be able to help out. So GPU pass through is cool and all, but let's take this a step further. What if we didn't have to toggle to a different monitor at all? That's where Looking Glass comes in. On your host, in my case the Windows host, you can download the exe file and run it as administrator and you should be set up there. And then you can actually set this up on Linux if you're looking to be able to control your Windows machine from here. In order to get Looking Glass up and running, you're going to have to add this to the XML file under devices, similar to how we added the FDEV stuff. Once you get it up and going on your Windows machine, on your Linux client, you're going to find the dependencies that you need for your distribution. For example, I'm running Arch, so I can just drop this into a terminal. Once you've done that, go ahead and run these four commands, and then you should be able to run the script, which will load the client. You may run into an error that says failed to open in reference to a file called looking glass under slash dev slash shm. So in order to fix this, you just need to run a few things. Start by um, making sure the file exists. You can do this by just um, using the touch command, sudo touch, and then slash dev slash shm slash looking glass. Once you've done that, there is another command. And lastly, you're going to want to use this command. After that, try running the script again, and you should be good to go. To take this a step further, I've created a script that'll automatically start my virtual machine and do those three things that we've described. 
There we go, look at that. And I can change the size of the screen. I've actually inserted a dummy plug into my graphics card as opposed to connecting it to a monitor since now I don't need to. So I'm going to go ahead and demo what this machine is capable of. You can see it's, it's running okay. I mean, there's a little bit of a, a refresh problem on the host end, and it's about as good as Cyberpunk could run anyway, since, um, you know, it's Cyberpunk. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. Obviously, putting the card through a lot, so... You can also see that the um, the font is a little blurry, so it's not perfect. There are ways to fix this, but um, out of the box, it's pretty solid, I'd say. So I have run into a few unfortunate hiccups with virtual reality, which is where I think booting bare metal might be my solution. So in the past, I've had a full ATX motherboard, and I was able to pass through some of the USB ports to my virtual machine to plug in the cable for the link. However, since transitioning to a micro ATX motherboard, I'm no longer able to do the same thing without breaking the system. So I thought maybe I could pass through the individual device after I've plugged it in, but it seems like Oculus won't pick up the headset if I do it that way. So unfortunately, I might have to boot bare metal. The only other solution is to buy a USB card that plugs into a PCIe slot and pass that through similar to how we did to the graphics card. However, I don't know if I have any room left on my motherboard since the GPU is pretty thick. So in the meantime, I might be booting bare metal for this, unfortunately. It should also be noted that Oculus Air Link does not work with a VM at all, which is strange considering I was able to get the app going and get it on the network and stuff, but for some reason they don't seem to talk to each other even if both are on the network and looking for each other. So. Maybe that's something that gets resolved in the future. I'm not quite sure what the issue is with that. I know for sure the cable does work. If you are able to pass through a port to the computer, it'll get picked up like it's done in the past for me. But unfortunately, my situation right now does not allow for the same setup. So that's pretty much how I utilize all the virtual machine stuff on my desktop in order to optimize my workflow. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. I know this has been a long one, but I just wanted to get all the information in here. If you like what I do, consider liking and subscribing. It really helps out the channel and gives me feedback on where I should go next. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time.